Look, obviously, we just returned from Port Elizabeth, so yeah, we're looking forward to the game. It's, it's right on top of us, so not, not really much time to affect the team too much. But um, yeah, we'll do, do a bit of a light session tomorrow and then play on Saturday. So we're look, looking forward to the game. All right, colleagues, I'll take questions from the floor, uh, starting with Karabo. Thank you. Thank you, Fatu. Good morning, coach. I hope you had a safe trip uh, back to Johannesburg. Coach, uh, your first derby, obviously you've been involved in, in prior derbies against the uh, Mamelodi Sundowns with Super Sports United. And uh, about this one, this one is the first uh, for you as, as, as the coach of KD Chiefs. Uh, any butterflies, you know, in, in your stomach? I mean, uh, it's been a long time coming, but just your thoughts of you having your first derby as the coach of uh, KD Chiefs. No, no. Just more um, looking forward to the game. Um, you know, and trying to obviously try and get the team right, keep working on the team, you know, trying to get us to play um, what I'm trying to do, you know, trying to instill. Um, but no, I'm looking, as I said, you know, used to this type of game, but obviously not as a derby. So it's not, if you look at it, with no supporters it makes a huge difference. So um, we just try to continue on, on our path forward and try to improve the team and, and try to improve results. That's all. Mazola. Uh, morning, Gavin. Um, just on... Uh, <coughs> Chelsea. Pirate... You poor last night, Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> we won 4 nil. I don't know what's Doesn't going matter. On. You played against a blind school. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Just your assessment of that Pirates team. Do you also feel like you might have a bit of an advantage given they've... Yeah, I mean, they've been calling them Vets Light as well because they've got so many of <laughs> the players that you've worked with. And... Just is you, you, do you look at that that team sheet and you think it's 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 quite a for lack of a bad, better word uh, you know maybe a, a super team in terms of the the players that they've they've put together there. Well, my opinion, I think they've got to be big favourites for 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 the league title this year. I think they've really boosted their squad. Um, they've got a lot of players who obviously I know and worked with. Um, so they've got a very very good squad of players. Um, what they do and how they do it is not, not for me to say. I really just try and concentrate on what we must do. Um, but really, they've got a good squad of players and they're certainly much, much stronger than they were last season. So, um, you know, I know what's ahead of us. So, we look forward to the game. Charles Baloy. Uh, good morning, Coach. Uh, Charles Baloy from, from the Southern. Uh, thank you, Coach, for being here. Um, coach, uh, let's talk about your battles against Pirates when you're coaching vets. You were involved in high scoring games and you've knocked them out of cup competitions a couple of times. And also, Coach, I want to talk about the importance of getting the away goals. This is, this is a two um, league matches. How does it play out? Do you send your team to try and get the away goal and have an advantage going into the second league as well? Thank you. Yeah, look. Um... The, the home and away does make a big difference. Um, so obviously, but we're not. Gonna, I don't think I'm, I'm not going to try and set us up any different. I'll try and get us to try and play normal. It's not like you you playing in a foreign country or something like that. We know the conditions, um, you know. Um, so yeah, we'll try and set it up and try and obviously score. Um, I think it does. We all know it does count. Um, so yeah, I don't see any my thinking or thought process. Um, the second leg when things come a little bit more into play. But certainly the first leg away from home, not for us, no. Really, uh, Morning, Kush. Um, looking at, um, looking at um, the, look, the past matches, in the last game you produced a clean sheet. Um, also, you created a number of chances. Um, which is something that should be encouraging um, going to, to to this game against Pirates. Do you then emphasize um, on the taking of chances, um, especially in, in this game coming? And and also maybe if you can um, just, because you've won this trophy with Bidwes Vets before, what make it easier? Um, I know it's still at the beginning of the season. What, what, what makes it easier? Five matches, you are the champion. Platform, which is the other champion. Yeah, I mean, this, this, the MTN Cup is a, it's a great, I mean, 
Um, it's been around for a long, long time. Obviously, other sponsors were involved, but it's a great opportunity to to get yourself in a cup final um, so early in the season, which I always think helps momentum going forward. The good thing is we've got two games in the semi-final, which gives you a certain perspective because of the home and away situation. But um, no, I mean, for us, for me, being new at the club is just trying to find out about the players a little bit more every day, every every game, um, and try and get us in a way of of playing which which suits the players that we've got. That's the most important thing. You know, can't come in here and just bash the door down. Uh, we've got to try and get a find a way that suits it, what we've got and, and try and take it one step forward at a time. On chances missed, you're going to hear any coach anywhere in the world after the game. But what's gone is gone. You know, you, you know, you've got to try and concentrate on the next game. You can't, uh, can't affect what happened on um, Tuesday night. Nati? Yes, uh, Coach is Nati from NGFM in Kulukwan. Obviously, you were not happy with the performances of the last, uh, the previous matches before Chippa United won. Do you then change a bit or you build on uh, the performance that was displayed against the Chippa United? I think it was well documented. I thought, I said on, as I said on Tuesday, I thought, you know, for parts of the game, most of the game, I thought we looked like a, a good football team. You know, a team that... Uh, I'd like to set them up and play. Obviously, we need to be a little bit versatile in certain things, but we look proper. Um, our distances were right. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, everything was was better. But obviously, you've got to take into consideration opposition. Opposition are totally different on Saturday. And as I've said before, you know, we've played two games, and I don't want to make excuses. We played two games in a 35 degree heat. It's going to be the same on Saturday. It's a totally different type of game. You know. Um, like Tuesday, you know, it's much cooler, much easier. Uh, so the two games we played already here at home, I mean, it was boiling with it. It's going to be the same on Saturday. So hopefully it's not too much of a walking pace game. Morgan. Morning, Gavin. Morgan here from uh, from Sport too. Well, yes, all right, Morgan. Good, good. Gavin, um, you mentioned now momentum early in the season, uh, but surely confidence doing well in a cup competition so early in the season will help its team that should have won the league last season. So this is a proper opportunity for Silverware to build that going forward. I think, um, I think in football, supporters, uh, media, uh, staff, I've got longer memories than players. Players don't remember, I'm telling you. Uh, players forget very quickly. So talking about confidence, I understand where you're coming from. But I mean, players forget things very, very quickly. So people around the game that remember situations more. You can only remember things when you get a little bit older. Um, but uh, the play, there's been no sort of meltdown I've seen from the players. You know, maybe you know lack of this or that, whatever. But I've seen nothing in that. So this, these competitions, as you rightly say, you know, if you can get yourself certainly through the semi-final, which is always a hard, the hardest part in any in any cup competition, semi-final. I always say the finals are much easier. The semi-finals are very, very difficult, and especially playing against um, an arch rival like Pirates, you know, or anybody for that matter. So um, it's right on top of us. Yeah, let's try and. I don't think it's going to knock your confidence. I think you need to work on certain things in the game which can help your confidence. So I don't, it's a long process, but I understand what I'm saying. Sorry if you don't understand, but yeah, it is what it is. Let's go to front runner. Uh, Coach Gavin Spure from Front Runner. Uh, there was so much expectation when Lazarus Kambola came from Zesco. Uh, how far is he from becoming the, the player that you want him to be? Uh, basically, what's missing from his game, uh, do you think, in order to get regular game time on your side? Thank you. Uh, I didn't know Lazzy until I saw him three weeks ago. I didn't really know anything about him. Or, um, uh, I think, you know, the football years are totally different speed of the game um, so the speed for me is something that not many people even coming from Europe top top players struggle in South Africa because you know in South Africa you know the, the players run faster than the ball where in Europe the ball moves faster than the players so the game is 100 miles an hour here 
uh, and people take time to adjust. And I think, you know, I'll gradually work with him and try and, you know, uh, get him to understand a little bit. But he, as a, he was here most, a lot of the last season, but I didn't really see much of him. So I don't really know him that much. So I'll, I'll try and work with him and, and try and, you know, get him to the levels where things are done much quicker here. I'll go to Max Stradom. Uh, morning, Coach. Um, Mark Strader, Marina Hollings. Uh, coach, just um, it, it has to be asked. Um, obviously, <laughs> hello, Mark. Hello? We lost you there. Can you just repeat? Eta <laughs> Mark. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, yeah, yeah, Coach. Um, it it has to be asked. I mean, of course, everyone knows the team's been five seasons without a trophy. Um, the previous coaches, that was the difficulty they faced was they got to cup finals but couldn't win. Um, it's so early. I know that. No pressure, but to to get a trophy would just take so much pressure off you. Um, just yeah, if you can just yeah, thanks. Uh, Mark, it's a very quite uh, unique question. <laughs> it's pressure every game. It doesn't matter where you coach. I don't. That's how I see it. I don't see it. Um, yes, obviously the, the magnitude of the club is huge, and they expect to win trophies on a regular basis. But we've also got to look at uh, a lot of things. You know, um, why we haven't won in five, six years? Well, I don't know how long they won here. I mean, we've got to look. So there's a lot of things. So. Let me just get through Saturday. Let me get through a few games and let's see. You know, I already know what we don't, what we need, and what we don't need, and so. But that that can only come out on the training ground, working on the players, and obviously trying to improve the squad that we've got and, and try and take it from there. So yeah, obviously, any in their right mind wouldn't want to get to and try and win the, you know, win the, to try and get to a final and try and take it one step further. That sometimes. Hey. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Okay, I'm taking the last round of questions. I'll start with Chad, Chad Clate. Chad Kelly Clate, sorry. Thank, thank you, Fatil. Uh, coach, um, obviously the dynamics change a bit uh, with, with this Soweto derby being behind closed doors. Um, does, it, does it take anything away for you f in, in terms of the, the experience of, of a Soweto derby where you would have liked to to have a pack stadium, FNB stadium, and 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 get the full experience. And then secondly, um, I mean, Pirates have, uh, I think it was six or seven uh, of your former players uh, in their squad. Does does it make it a bit easier planning for them? Uh, you know, knowing what what they have to offer in in those players that they have in their squad. Yeah, obviously, I mean, you you want full stadiums. I I like that. I like that. Um... And the players certainly feel it. There's no doubt about it. Uh, maybe that's a lot to do with them in the league last year at the end. Um, but I certainly feel that you know it can get you across the line sometimes, um, especially if you've got them more on your side than against you. Um, I'm I'm more used to them having against me, so I'm used to that. Um, but yeah, I would love to have had that experience. But hopefully, it'll come one day. Um, on the players, I don't think it makes any difference. Yes, sure, I know all of them. I signed all of them. Um, so I know them very, very well, but I don't think it makes any difference. You can, it's like, you know, doing video analysis of opposition. I think it's the most overrated thing in the world. Because you can talk all day, talk all day. The player's got to do it on the day. You know, you can one or two things here and there and show, but, you know, less sometimes is, you know, the player's got to take the responsibility. So, yeah, but sure, you know, there's seven of them there at the moment. I think six or seven of them are playing. So, yeah. You know, I know the ins and outs, where they live. I know everything, you know, sure. <laughs> Coach, uh, just a question about player availability uh, this weekend. Do you have anyone out? Mm, no, we pretty much got a full bill of health. Well, they just started training today. A couple of them come back. But, I mean, there's no ways they can play Saturday um, due to the levels of, uh, you know, match intensity. There's no ways. But they started, actually two, three of them started training today. So let's see. We're going to need them in the weeks to come, that's for sure. Okay, uh, moving on, maybe let's go to Carabo. 
Thank you, thank you, Fatu. Uh, uh, coach, uh, I think for for a couple of youngsters out in your team and Jablu Blom as well as uh, Nob, I think they'll be making their debuts. Quite young players. Uh, is there anything special that you say to them? You put an arm around the shoulder, you know, make him feel giant, or you lift that to the senior players? No, don't say a word to the players. Don't need to say anything to them. I think that's overrated. You know, they're there because they're good enough. Um, concentrate on what you have to do, what you don't have to do. Forget about everything else. Um, um, you know, when they need a little bit of guidance, sure. Um, if I see, you know, they're not doing the right things, but sometimes you've got to discover these things yourself a little bit as a player. You know, too much instructions is too much sometimes. Sometimes is, uh, they're there because they've got the ability. You put them in the structure. They understand the structure. Um, they've got one or two things to concentrate on and let them concentrate on that. And then um, we'll try and take them to the next level, next level. But to throw too much at them too early is in terms of information and stuff, it's sometimes very, uh, very not the best thing. So let them discover a little bit and then we can uh, work from there. Very uh, quickly. Coach, one player you also had um, this week at Senderberg was uh, Rezana. I think this is his uh, third season now and he's not staked his claim in terms of maybe being consistent in the starting lineup, what do you find in the boy having worked with him for the past few weeks and um, maybe where you can you think he, he can improve? Um, I was, I've been quite surprised with him. You know, he's, I like, um, to be careful what I say here, um, I like wild horses, you know. He don't give me dead horses. I like wild horses and he's, he's, I like him because he's, he's willing to learn you know, and rather, rather let's let's tame him a little bit, bring him back to where you know uh, he's a very enthusiastic boy. Um, you know, some yes, I don't know what you know what's happened before with him. I can only see what's in front of me, but I need to get him to understand a f- f- certain things. I think um, he's better in. I would think he'd be right now. Right now, he's better in some sort of games and other sort of games because of what's he going to play against. But right now. Um, he's got the platform, you know. As I said, explain one or two things. Hopefully, he puts it into practice. And every day, we can just get a little, you know, take a step further. Because, as I've always said, centre backs generally in the world, the best ones are all over thirty. So centre backs take longer to mature. It's like goalkeepers, I always think they take longer to mature. Um, and in, in his position, the maturity sometimes, you know, takes a little bit of time. But he's, he's, he's you know, he's He's got all the makings, athletic, he's strong. Um, and maybe he needs a bit of a run. I don't know. Maybe he needs a run, but let's see. Um, consistency is the most important thing at center back. It's not about, you know, the flashy stuff. It's the most consistent thing, um, which, no, which sometimes generally players don't like to do. And I think he likes to do that part of the game, which is important. You need, and, you need, and every football team, the best teams in the world, need, those type of, need these type of players. So let's see, you know. Um, Maybe get another chance and take it from there. Okay, Zakele, you'll have the last question since you haven't asked. Zakele? Zakele, are you there? Yes, uh, yes, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, um, uh, hi, coach. Uh, Zakele from Miss Oles and newspaper in Devon. Um, wherever you've been, it's super sport vets, um, all your centre backs normally. Um, go, go, go all the way and be regulars in the Bafana Bafana team. Who do you see in the leadership team doing that? And the second one, I'm not sure whether, whether it's been asked, uh, what's going to happen with the players that have been training with the team? The last of Landy, Nange, since what, 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 you know what happens with the case. With the case. Uh, right now, uh, I'm going to have a meeting now with the chairman and as we finish here about those players. We're going to see what's going to happen. Um, Possibly have to loan them out to get to some play. You can't even play, play not playing for so long. But I mean, that's one of the options. I'm not sure what he thinks, but we'll discuss that. Um, I've always said to win anything, anywhere in the world, um, you've got to have good centre-backs. Forget about strikers and everything else. You've got to have good centre-backs. And your centre-backs can you know, help you in defending in situations and scoring goals in situations. I think it, uh, there's no two ways about it. You know, everybody looks for different types of centre backs. I know what I want, what I look for, but you know, um, yeah. 
Centre backs have got to be scoring goals. That's for sure, and defending your box. That's for sure. So you know, let's, let's let's. I've only been here a short while, so let's you know, let me just work with them a little bit more and see what happens. You know, like they just started training today. Tower, um, Zuma, uh, and Maleko. He trained maybe yeah. So you know, we might have to use them on the bench because we're all a little bit short, but. Yeah, they started just started training. 